بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معكم هو إسماعيل محمد أحمد جي بي أو فاميلي ميديسين فيزيشن من يو كي اللايف ده جزء من البرنامج بتاع سيدا اللي هو ذا بروفيشنال ديفولبمنت بروجكت والليلة إن شاء الله هنتكلم عن dealing with complexity and uncertainty and everyday life approach برضو هنناقش ال consent وال autonomy وال end of life and decision إن شاء الله الموضوع يكون relevant ومفيد للناس هنخلي كل الأسئلة للنهاية إن شاء الله بإذن الله تعالى إلا إذا كان في حاجة مستعجلة أنتوا عايزين نناقشها خلال ال اللايف أو خلال ما بنناقش الموضوع نفسه بعد ما يخلص الله برضو أنا حارجع لكل الأسئلة وإن شاء الله بإذن الله تعالى أرد عليها طيب أنا حابدة كلامي بال four ethical pillars اللي هي كلنا خلال مسيرتنا في كل الطب وبعد ما عملنا الامتياز وخلال المراحل المختلفة من الميديكال كاريرز بتاعتنا كلنا مرينا بها ويعني حافظينها اللي هي beneficence which is do good non maleficence do not do harm وجستيس وأوتونومي التخيلية الثلاثة الأوائل اللي هي do good do not do harm والجستيس straight forward this is the public perception of us as a doctor that is we're doing good and we're not doing harm and we're providing and that justice I think the third one, uh, or the fourth one rather, uh, the autonomy is the one that is not so clear and for the public it's just part of the medical jargon uh, we use every day. And the way we apply and these four ethical barriers is very much um, the dependent is many factors, um, including the patient age, their cultural background, um, their family life, and most importantly, the expectation. أم طيب أه إحنا في الـ في الـ الأكثر حاجة هنركز عليها في الـ في الطوق ده الأوتونومي أنا لأنه related to الكونسبت و الكونسبت و بتاع الكاباسيتي والكونسنت أم أنا خدت الـ الـ guidelines بتاعت الـ الـ GMC عن الكونسنت الأوتونومي وال والكاباسيتي في الـ في الـ في البي دي اف دايما بيكون افيلبل مع الفريق بتاع سجه طيب لما نتكلم عن الاوتونومي الاوتونومي هو هو شنو الاوتونومي هو الاستقلاليه في اتخاذ القرار يعني اي انسان عنده الحق انه يقرر الحاجه المناسبه له شنو طالما كان ملم بكل المعلومات الكافيه من اهل الاختصاص اللي هي يعني شنو everyone has the right to choose what they think is right for them and one very important aspect في الموضوع بتاع الأوتونومي ده إنه when our patient don't agree with us we have to be comfortable with that لأنه although we know better about medicine we think they know much better about themselves and their life and what they want to do with it Um, for as long as now we give them um, the uh, and, and information that they need, and we have given them the information in a safe way, they have the right to choose the decisions in a safe way. We have the right to choose the decisions in a safe way. We have the right to choose the decisions in a safe way. We have the right to choose the decisions in a safe way. We just need to support them. ده بالنسبة لموضوع الأوتونومي أنا I put the autonomy, the capacity and the concept together لأنهم they very related to each other and they use, uh, we are use them interchangeably uh, طيب نجي لموضوع الكونسنت um, موضوع الكونسنت إحنا we do it all the time يعني we do it in every day uh, we consent patient when we examine them we consent them when we order investigation we consent them about procedures different type of treatment um, we do it all the time um, and 
what is the aim of the consent is um, that you have to provide a clear and concise information and that uh, it has to be in lay term and um, you have to um, give the patient the benefit and the risk of what you, what you are consenting them before and leave the decision and to them. Now, one of the um, good tips, um, I think, especially for junior doctors, um, when you are starting a new uh, placement or a new rotation, is very important that is you get familiar with a different operation, procedure, treatment, um, investigation that is commonly offered um, for placement. Yeah, uh, to do your homework. Learn with that is will make things much easier for you when you are um, discussing it with patient, uh, when you are consenting them for, and you will be able to answer the uh, question uh, competently and confidently. Uh, one of the other things that is important in consent do not rush. Um, although we all under time pressure uh, and we all have to use our time effectively and efficiently, take your time when you consent the patient. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to spend the whole day, but you know, take your time. And what you will find is as you um, do it more, um, it's, with, it's like with everything, you're just becoming more confident and more competent um, in doing it. One of the other things that is can help you when you consent patient, especially when you do it in uh, for plant procedure, when you do it for um, investigations, that is you can give a patient information beforehand. You can either post it to them before they come to see you uh, or when they come to see you um, in the clinic or in the um, uh, in the surgery, um, then you can um, give them a written information talk to them more, try to answer their question, and signpost them to um, the useful online resources. There's a lot of useful online resources, certainly um, the Support Society, or the, they are very good um, resource information. Refrain them from using Google. That is never a good idea. And what that does is actually give the patient the chance to absorb that information, think about it themselves, and um, speak to their family or their friends about it. So when they come to see you next, um, you know, taking a consent is much easier. Uh, um, بالنسبة لموضوع الكونسنت. طيب بالنسبة لموضوع الكاباسيتي. والكاباسيتي هي شنو القدرة على اتخاذ القرار. Um, وال uh, والقدرة على اتخاذ القرار وال GMC بيقول شنو في موضوع ال capacity you must work on the assumption that is every person has a capacity unless it's clear he doesn't يعني الكلام ده معناه شنو يعني uh, أي شخص له القدرة على اتخاذ القرار ما لم يثبت العكس بعدين الحاجة الثانية المهمة في موضوع ال capacity إنه ال capacity is a decision specific Yani, uh, it's not just a blanket. We can't say, well, this patient has a capacity or this patient doesn't have a capacity. Leanno, uh, mungkin ayan, he can do the capacity in um, making his treatment decision, but he doesn't have a capacity in um, dealing with his financial issue. Yani, da ala sabi lang mithar. Tayyib, the capacity uh, in everyday life. Um, بتحتمد على أربع حاجات يعني إحنا لما نجي ماشيين في العنبر ولا في العيادة وعايزين نقرر إنه المريض ده عنده capacity ولا ما عنده capacity في أربع حاجات مفروض نعرفها اللي هي the ability of patient to understand the information العيان ده فاهم إحنا بنقول ليه في شنو the ability of patient to retain the information يعني are they key, able to keep it وإذا سألناه تاني بعد عشرة دقائق بس ولا نص ساعة بيقدر يقول لنا الكلام اللي قلناه و the ability of them to weigh the information um, weigh the risk and the benefit يعني هو بيقدر يقدر الأمور يعرفوا الفائدة بتاعت الحاجة اللي قلنا لها أو الخطورة اللي هي um, أو الأعراض الجانبية والحاجة الرابعة اللي هي the ability of the patient uh, to make a decision not just to make a decision and to um, communicate that decision or to voice that decision and that can be verbally ولا إذا العيان عنده أي مشكلة في موضوع uh, يعني عنده أي فيزيا ولا عنده أي مشكلة في موضوع to communicate it verbally even, even if he can write it down 
that is um, fine. So it's four aspects to that, um, assessing someone's capacity. Um, ability of patient to understand the information, retain the information, weigh up the information, this can benefit and um, make a decision and void that decision back to you. Um, now, when it's not very clear cut, um, when you just when you are in doubt about, well, I'm not quite sure. Maybe he does two. He doesn't do do um, the other two. I'm not quite sure whether this person has um, a capacity or no. Um, then the best thing to get an expert opinion and get the uh, capacity assessed formally. And most of the time, that is will be um, um, a psychiatrist or an old age and um, psychiatry or some of the care of the elderly consultant. They might be able to do it. Just get um, them an expert help. Um, moving into the next part of the talk, which is um, the dealing with um, complexity and, and the un uncertainty. Uh, well, uncertainty دي يعني لما الأمور تكون ما واضحة um, لما نكون إحنا ما عارفين إحنا الحاصل شنو وما قادرين نوري المريض إحنا الحاصل شنو فدي بيكون uh, دي, دي يعني this is لما نقول دي إحنا uncertain يعني إحنا ما متأكدين طيب الحاجة المهمة النقطة الأولى في موضوع الانسيرتينيتي دي uncertainty in medicine cannot be avoided it's just part of the job is part of the deal فأهم حاجة وأعتقد إنه دي زاد هي جزء life itself is uncertain دي جزء يعني جزء من سنن الحياة فحاجة من الحاجات المهمة جدا في dealing with the uncertainty إنك أنت you have to become comfortable with the uncertainty yourself you have to become comfortable with saying I don't know and what you will all find is as you um, have more experience as you um, become uh, more um, competent um, in different area of um, your specialty, it will become um, easier to you to say, well, actually, I don't know, I haven't got a clue about this particular uh, problem. And that is in itself, it makes it much easier. And now, and, uh, when we face with uncertainty, um, it depends on what type of uncertainty we are faced with and that is how we can handle it and how we can manage it. So the first type of uncertainty we can face with um, is uncertainty uh, because, um, so we don't know uh, or things are not clear to us because we have um, uh, gaps in our personal knowledge and then the areas outside our area of expertise, we're not quite sure. And in a way that is, um, straightforward to deal with and um, or one of the easiest uncertainty type to deal with you can and um, go back and do your reading your research review things and hopefully you might find an answer uh, you could discuss things with your colleagues with your senior colleagues so you could discuss things in meetings and it's not uncommon that is when things are discussed in meeting you might be actually the one who come with that eureka moment and find the answer the third thing is um, the, you refer people to other specialities or just you ask a friend. Um, one, of the, um, the, um, one of the important um, points when you refer a patient to the other specialty, when you ask a friend, that is to manage patient expectation before referring them. And what I mean by saying that is especially in um, the gray area of medicine when the answers are not clear cut, is to prepare the patient while um, the, my colleagues who I'm referring you to might have an answer. Uh, so the patient um, the, don't expect, well, you know, this patient will just, you know, um, answer the question. And that is, well, um, lower the burden, just make it a much easier job um, the, for the patient, the, the person who you're referring to, to handle that um, consultation. So this is the first type of uncertainty we can be dealing with. The uh, next type of uncertainty is um, when it's actually uh, there's not a lot known about um, that particular issue. There's still ongoing research and uh, the treatment options are not clear cut. And I think in this time, we just have to be honest with the patient and um, explain everything to them very clearly, explain to them the lack of evidence and that we actually, as a collective medical community, and um, we're still learning about what's going on here. 
and going back to the autonomy uh, a point you know we give the patient all the information we know um, and tell them and then they have the right to make their decision uh, the third um, type um, of uncertainty uh, when the patient presents with very vague symptoms and um, think they don't fit together they don't fit to any diagnos diagnostic criteria we are familiar with and I think um, this is what we and um, a lot of generalists um, face, such as general practitioner, family medicine physician, um, emergency medicine consultant, um, you know, acute uh, um, medicine physician, um, uh, psychiatrist as well. And that is when the patient just present with this um, array of symptoms that don't make any sense. And I think whenever a patient um, like this present um, to you, I think the five question he wants an answer to, what is it? What's going on? And I think in answering that question, and uh, you could um, you could just just give them a description. Well, it's a pain in your right thigh. Um, and then, um, so the five questions, so just, is I got to pull the five questions, and then I got to the five questions, I got to the five uncertainty, um, can it be that, um, as hell? طيب, what is it? Um, what is it? Um, is it serious? Uh, will it go away? Um, then what we can do to help it, and how did it happen? طيب, الحاجة الأولى اللي قلنا لما ال ال يجيك ال um, المريض يسأل, what is it? Um, I think what it can help, you just give them a description. Is a pain in your right thigh? It's a rash in your left foot. Just give them almost an anatomical, dis anatomical description of what's going on. Is it serious? And that is when you go through your red flags. Make sure you're not missing an important diagnosis. Make sure you're not missing a serious diagnosis. And will it go away? Um, I think the best thing in dealing with this type of question is um, allow the um, the natural history to happen. So, for example, we all know that is an upper respiratory tract infection will take three weeks to resolve. Um, a viral otitis media will take four days to go away. But some of these fake symptoms, we're not quite sure how long to go um, then, or how long will it take for it to go away. So, if you advise patient to, to give it and um, two weeks or three weeks and then come back for a follow-up and review obviously if things got much worse or they develop the any symptoms then they um, um come back that is will make things um, the, uh, much better and how we can do to help it i think one of the important um, things about this part uh, never prescribe something that is you feel unnecessary never prescribe something just to please the patient or uh, to treat the patient rather than um to treat because you're treating the patient rather than treating their symptoms and as long as you're clear about your uncertainty and you advise patient to allow nature to take a course and see what happens that should be absolutely fine um, so this is with regard to um, the uncertainty is the three types and then we discuss how we can manage with um, uh, with each of them. But as I said, in the beginning, the uncertainty that you become comfortable with, you actually, in a way, you embrace it and just say, I don't know. And then you know what to do when you don't know. Uh, طيب um, الحاجة الثانية اللي حناقشها uh, في اللايف ده بعد ما انتهينا موضوع ال uncertainty ال complexity uh, طيب ال complexity ده لما يكون يعني الموضوع معقد جدا uh, ويعني بع يعني كلنا يعني بنمر بال بال يعني في بال cases دي وال scenarios دي uh, when we just when we see that patient or a clinic list when we see his name flashing on our desktop or uh, when the um, nurse come with this multiple set of notes and then our heart sink. I think the best way of dealing with um, complexity is um, to untangle it. يعني شنو untangle it يعني نفك فيك الكمبلكسيتي دي حبة حبة why this patient is complex أول حاجة المفروض الحاجة اللي نعرفها no, pa no patient choose to be complex no patient is a difficult patient um, لكن في مجموعة عوامل إحنا لازم نعرفها why is a particular patient is complex طيب الحاجة الأولى it might be the diagnosis it might be the patient diagnosis so the patient have 
um, a very rare diagnosis or very complex and challenging diagnosis and the picture is not so clear, we're not quite sure about which way things are heading. طيب دي الحاجة الأولى في الكومبلكسيتي. الحاجة الثانية the patient comorbidities. So and um, you know the patient have a lot of um, medical problems. They have a lot of medical issues. If we treat this, this will affect this, and we have to be careful about weighing the risk and benefit. We have to be careful about what type of treatment we're introducing. Um, so that is what makes them complex. I think is the patient's social history, and that is right from um, the, the smoking history, the alcohol drinking history, if they are taking any recreational drugs, and uh, their family circumstances, who live with them, who support them. Um, the fourth point is the uh, the patient uh, mental health issues, and that is um, you know can make the um, a patient with a straightforward diagnosis, a very complex patient. So a patient with depression, patient with anxiety, and patient with um, psychotic symptoms, they can be very complex to manage. Uh, the fifth um, part of you know, entangling complexity is um, managing patient idea, concern, and expectation. Uh, what patient expect uh, from this consultation and I think if you try to get that very early on when um, when you meet with this patient in your consultation that is will make um, things much easier for you and I think if you um, address um, this point um, part by part and bit by bit and see what you can do about with them this will make things you know much easier uh, with the, dealing with complex um, patient or um, the patient who have complex diagnosis or even complex needs, um, one of the important tips is uh, is what we what we say, you know, housekeeping. Okay, so whenever you see that patient flashing on your desktop or and uh, that um, multiple set of notes, um, you just you know sit back and take a deep breath. Okay. Um, and just try to think for yourself, how will I handle this consultation before calling this patient in? And then just going through your list, why this patient is complex and what I can do about it. What I, what I can do to make it less complex, what I can do to solve this puzzle. Um, and then just expect this patient will talk longer than the others. So if you have allocated a 20 minute, um, he will definitely take longer. And I think when you prepare yourself and when, when you go with that mindset in that consultation, that is will make it much easier and you won't be overly stressed. And, and I think you will feel yourself and uh, more sympathizing with this um, type of patient rather than, you know, your heart sink every time you see their name or see their, their notes. Um, so this is sort of a brief way about how to deal with um, complexity. Again, I put the GMC guidelines on how to deal with complexity and then um, at the end of this, um, at the PDF, that is will be attached to this um, live. Uh, النقطه الثانيه اللي حنتكلم عنها في الـ في الـ في اللايف ده اللي هي شنو um, end of life decision ولا end of life discussion. Uh, طيب الموضوع ده بالنسبة لكثير مننا ما الموضوع المفضل um, اللي هو الكلام عن الموت okay. uh, ما الموضوع المفضل وأنا أعتقد جزء من الـ الـ الحاجة دي إنه ما بنحب نتكلم عن عن الموت إنه I think deep down in our heart um, as doctors dealing with death as if we're admitting failure and after all we are we are the people who save life we are the people who make life better we are the people who make um people you know uh, feel better we are the people who improve people life so and uh, i think dealing with death is sort of you know we no longer can do anything about it and um, so i think this is part of the, you know the psychological analysis of um of it and and some of us they actually might and um, shy away from having this difficult conversation with their patient and even though it can be appropriate and it can be um it is actually very good to referring them to um yeah to specialist team such as the palliative care team um في نفس الوقت الحاجه دي مهمه انه احنا uh, يعني 
الناس اللي قابلناهم في الرحلة بتاعتهم بتحت المرض دي يعني بس ما نتخلى عنهم um, It might be we just we met them when they first presented with their symptoms in a clinic, in a GP surgery, in, um, in, a, in, in the casualty or in uh, the medical assessment unit uh, bed It might be we are the one who broke the bad news to them and just told them about that diagnosis it might be the one who we treated them it might be we are one of the um, surgical team who dealt with that large obstruction which is turned up to be um, a, a sequel tumor whatever the stage we um, met them at they have you know they have the right um, the, and they have the right expectation from us to support them when they come to the end and i think they expect that from us and i think it will be um يعني as if we are يعني we dumb them يعني كأنه إحنا تخلينا عنهم و just we um the يعني we say to the um the palliative team off you go you go to the to the palliative team um, لأنه في 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 كثير من الأحيان يعني المرضى بتكون صعب عليهم إنهم you been dealing with them all this way and all of a sudden they have to deal with um a different team different nurses different doctors but they are very good at doing their job but I think we should keep our job, we should keep our touch with our patient. Uh, طيب, but having a good understanding of end of life decision and um, that, that is that is no longer a taboo. Okay. Um بالعكس, uh, إحنا مفروض يكون هدفنا, uh, إنو, uh, يعني, to help people um, live well and die well. Um, يعني, to support the people and um, to have a good death. Um, it should be uh, one of the goals of our and we sh it should be considered as a privilege. In we are with the patients, in the past, we are with the patients. Okay, the important things that we whenever we do an end of life um, discussion, we take it into consideration. Okay, before I go أخش على النقطة دي بتاعت الحاجات المهمة اللي احنا المفروض ناخدها في الاعتبار لما نعمل the end of life and discussions ولا إنه دايما احنا بنحس إنه a discussion about um, cancer uh, or cancer diagnosis uh, are much easier. لأنه أعتقد إنه the cancer diagnosis uh, بيكون فيها clear prognosis. We know what will happen. We know what type of um, treatment will work. Um, and then we generally speak and have much more knowledge about when it comes to the cancer diagnosis. I think few of us or I might say a lot of us don't feel so comfortable about end-of-life uh, discussion when it comes to um, conditions such as uh, congestive cardiac failure or um, severe COPD or um, the multiple neuron disease um, and so on and I think the reason for that being we have less um, clear trajectories with this type of diagnosis we have less clear prognosis with this time of um, diagnosis. But I think my take on it is um, even if you have that um, discussion with that severe COPD patient a little bit earlier and he lasted a couple of years, that should be absolutely fine. Um, um, at least you, you started the conversation with, with them. I think you started them, you know, um, thinking about it and talking about uh, about it and obviously when you do this type of discussion you have to be very sensitive and you have to be aware of you know the patient background the patient culture Afwan, the patient culture background and the patient expectation and their family around them and the support they have uh, but the earlier start this type of conversation, the better for their patient, the better for um, the, their families. طيب, uh, لمن, يعني, لمن نا, 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 نعمل, يعني, أنا إنه خلاص الموضوع قرب وإحنا مفروض نتجهز له وكذا لازم إحنا دائما يعني نقول لهم حتى في الحاجات مثلا لكن أك أديجنوزف مزت اليوم we all know that is the diagnosis is very poor diagnosis people might not last and then six months from diagnosis and but يعني في النهاية patient might surprise you 
وانه احنا الكلام ده كله بنعمله عشان نجهزهم للاسوء لكن في النهايه ممكن لسه نتوقع الاحسن طيب الحاجات المفروض النقاط المهمه المفروض تتناقش مع العيانين في الاند اوف لايف ديسيجن اول حاجه ذا بريفيرد بليس اوف ديث طيب العيان عايز يموت وين اوكي معظم العيانين عايزين يموتوا في البيت طيب very few of the patient I mean I can't remember the I can't remember the last time a patient asked to die in the hospital طيب والحاجة دي مهمة إنه يعني الحاجات يعني تبدأ تتجهز من بدري we get everything prepared early if the patient chooses some place to die is is home um, لأن الهوم ده يعني it might not be suitable uh, بعض العيانين عندهم a lot of support they have family around them uh, but some of the patients don't have that um, فإحنا um, make sure everything is ready for them دي الحاجة الأولى the preferred place um, of death and if they choose to, to die in the hospice again we can um, make the necessary arrangement for that Um, دل, uh, دل حاجتين الـ 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 أو الحاجة الأولى المهمة إنه the preferred place of death الحاجة الثانية um, المهمة في موضوع um, الـ end of life discussion اللي هي الـ DNR اللي هي uh, do, not re, um, do not resuscitate طيب uh, من الـ 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 point المهمة uh, إنه uh, موضوع الـ resuscitation ده الفاميلي والمريض لازم يفهموا انه is a medical decision okay. uh, يعني القرار ده قرار الطبيب uh, ما قرار العائلة ولا قرار المريض لانه بيحصل شنو uh, لما اهل المريض بالذات يحس انه هو القرار ده قرار they find it very difficult they find it as if they given up on him they find it as if they supporting and uh, you know they not supporting him enough يعني كأنهم هم جنوع منه آه فهو انت انت لما تقول لهم انه القرار ده قرار طبي وانه احنا بس يعني بنكلمكم عشان نوضح لكم الصورة عشان انت كل الحاجات تكون واضحة بالنسبة لكم الحاجة دي will take a huge burden um, of them آه برضو القرار ده مفروض يتناقش من بدري ويتناقش بطريقة واضحة ويعني دا يعني and you don't, you, don't have, you don't have to have all this discussion at once Um, especially if the patient becomes, يعني it will show up very frequently, or it will show up at a regular interval. يعني ما لازم كل الحاجات تناقش في وقت واحد. ف يعني مثلا uh, when on appointment you can bring the discussion gently. بعدين أنت براك بشوف ال response بتاع ال patient or response بتاع ال family. بعد ذاك the next appointment you can discuss the preferred place of death and the uh, resuscitation decision. آه طيب ديل الحاجتين المهمات آه لمناقشتهم مع المرضى في, في الأحوال اللي بيكون فيها يعني clear diagnosis and you expect things to um, sorry عفوا ما clear diagnosis clear prognosis يعني انت you expect things um, to turn up for the worse um, دي من الح... من الح... أو أنت you expect the patient might lose their ability to communicate um, the... or the ability to express their wishes It's very important in that to encourage the patient very early on and uh, in the middle of the chain. I leave a is my advanced life directive of a is my the power of attorney. طيب ال Advanced Life Directive دي اللي هي is a legal document والعيانين ممكن يعملوها مع المحامين بتاعينهم. الفائدة بتاعت ال Advanced Life Directive دي إنه العيان من بدري uh, بيقعد وبيكتب الحاجات اللي هو دايرة. Uh, يعني بكتب الحاجات اللي هو دايرة مثلا يعني uh, uh, كأنها هي مثلا زي وصية لكن مختلفة من الوصية حتى أعتقد أنه uh, بعدها القانون بيختلف تماما من الوصية المهم ما يهمنا في موضوع uh, في ما يعني في المجال الطبي أنه الـ Advanced Life Directive دي الـ patient will write very clearly what he want to um, have done what he doesn't want to have done what his wishes الحاجة دي uh, فائدة أنه When a patient becomes very unwell, when he loses his capacity, when he loses his ability to communicate, his and um, wish uh, his wishes will be honored and respected. For لو عندكم أي um the عيان uh, إنتوا حاسين إنه مثلاً um things will just يعني get worse and ما حيقدر يعني يقول هو عايش إنه في المستقبل في it is a good idea to encourage them to go for an advanced life um directive. 
آه طيب لأنه الناس مختلفين ولأنه المرضى مختلفين ولأنه ال patient experience expectation and their life is different is so different آه في حاجة ثانية اسمها the povertone آه في بعض المرضى بفضل أنهم آه يعني دي زي كأنك أنت بتدي توكيل لشخص آخر عشان يأخذ القرارات دي الشخص الآخر ده يعني شخص بتختار أنت معظم المرضى بيختاروا آه اللي هو يعني الأقرباء من الدرجة الأولى الزوج أو الزوجة آه الابن أو الابنة لكن يعني بعض ال بعض المرضى يعني بيختاروا أصدقاء المهم المريض عنده الحق يختار a name person في البوفتوني وبرضه هي وثيقة قانونية is a legal document آه العيان بقرر فيها إنه شنو إنه هو بدي الإنسان ال الإنسان هو اللي هو فوض ده أو وكل ده الحق إنه يعمل له ال يعني يتخذ القرارات نيابة عنه فدي الحاجتين المهمات اللي هي الأدفانس لايف دايركتيف والبوفتوني المفروض الزول يعني يشجع المرضى إنهم هم ممكن يعملوهم طيب ده بالنسبة للأند أوف لايف ديسيجن طيب أنا في الـ يعني في الـ الأند أوف لايف اللايف ده الأند فيو ده أم إن شاء الله تكون لقيتوه يعني مفيد وتطش إنه الـ إن الـ areas الناس محتاجة إليها التيك هوم مسجز بالنسبة لي إنه um, every patient has the right um, to know and have the right to be well informed in a good and clear way uh, دي الحاجة الأولى أنا بحس بها حاجة مهمة جدا um, يعني في كل يعني في كل ما كل مراحلنا كأطباء يعني من البداية إلى النهاية إن شاء الله الحاجة الثانية إنه uh, our job to look after the patient and from cradle to grave يعني إحنا مهمتنا كأطباء إنه نرعى المرضى ونحتني بهم من المهد إلى اللحد في كل هذه الرحلة دي كلها إنه إحنا المفروض نقوم بواجبنا على أكمل وجه دي النقطة الثانية اللي بحس بها حاجة مهمة إنه is it to take home message الحاجة الثانية يعني um, يعني it might sound like a cliche لكن I will encourage you all um, to treat the patient the same way you would like your dearest and nearest to be treated I think if we do that with every single patient we'll definitely um, end up with um, them a good outcome and a satisfying outcome um, طيب أنا خلاص كده خلصت فإذا في هخلي يعني حقعد دقيقة أو دقيقتين عشان لو في أي أسئلة لو في تعليقات ما شايفة في أي أسئلة ولا في أي تعليقات You are very welcome, Ya Muhammad Yaqub. Tabi Ahmad Gal, best time to talk about the end of life care. Um, والله السؤال ده صعب لكن في النهاية الإجابة عليه هو إنه في لما نكون إحنا عارفين عندنا very clear prognosis لما يكون الحاجة I won't say is a clear cut لكن the prognosis is clear and we expect the patient to um them. To die within a certain um, time frame, so we can after that, that we, um, يعني نبدأ نتكلم معهم عن the end of life discussion, um, عن ال um, النقاط اللي قلتها إيليا. Um, دائما بحس إنه uh, يعني ال 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 people who are being dealing with the patient along with their journey, either their um, general practitioner, or the patient who broke the in the diagnosis to them because in a better position to start that discussion with them. Um, how early? Um, 
Um, زي ما قلت يعني um, لما يكون عندنا clear cut it's fine لكن for the, um, the other diagnosis that is we don't have a clear prognosis the earlier the better um, حتى لو قمنا عملنا الموضوع على أجزاء يعني إنه في الأول يعني uh, بدينا a discussion gently with them just يعني try to get the response see what they think see if they are prepared to it and um, um, يعني themselves, have they thought about themselves because sometimes actually the patient might surprise us um, especially with the patient with the non-cancer diagnosis and when you start that discussion with them they might say to you well we actually thought about it and then you know that is will make your job easier and then you can carry on um, uh, فما لازم تعمل كل النقاش في uh, مرة واحدة ولا في مح- uh, ولا في مواعيد واحدة بن- بالنسبة للناس مثلا the other specialty if they started a discussion with the patient and they want the general practitioner to carry on uh, ف- um, uh, يعني ممكن حتى لما يكتبوا ال- الرسالة لل- لل- للجيب انهم يقولوا منهم بدوا بدوا ال- 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 conversation they started the conversation وبعد ذاك the GP can carry it, um, can carry it on um, لكن is every patient is, is different but generally speaking um, the earlier the better in the end of life um, وبعدين يعني I think it's one of the important point to, to explain to the patient we're actually not giving them up we're not stopping it we're not giving up on them we're not stopping any type of treatment we're just you know preparing and uh, preparing things to just make everything everything is ready um, if it turned to the worst Um, Afwania Taysir. طيب خلاص شكرا جزيلا لكم كلكم وان شاء الله لو في اي اسئله ثانيه انا اي ويل اند برجح ثاني لللايف وان شاء الله اجاوب على يلا ان شاء الله نلتقيكم مره اخرى في واحده ثانيه من اللايفز بتاع السجه. معيز موسى والله طبعا الاسينيزيا دي على حسب الحتة اللي انت شغال فيها احنا عندنا في يوكي هنا في بريطانيا اللي هي الاسينيزيا لسه ضد القانون يعني criminal offense اللي هي جريمة يعاقب عليها القانون فبعد ذاك على حسب الحتة اللي انت شغال فيها في اماكن كثيرة من أوروبا مسموح باليوثينيزيا وعندهم عيادات متخصصة لكن هنا في بريطانيا هي حاجة criminal and offense إن شاء الله أكون كده جاوبت على سؤالك Okay, F1. Uh, طيب أخوانا شكرا جزيلا وإن شاء الله نلتقيكم ثاني في واحدة من الـ um, Life بتاعة أم سجة. الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله.